In this example, we're asked to find the area of the surface, or surface area, generated by rotating the curve given by the parametric equations on the given interval of t when the curve is rotated about the x-axis. So the given parametric equations on this interval would produce this blue curve in the first quadrant. Then if we rotate this about the x-axis here, it would produce this red surface, and our goal is to find the area of the surface, or the surface area. To do this, we're going to be using this formula here, and notice because we're rotating about the x-axis, the integrand contains y. This y represents the radius. Notice how the radius would be a vertical distance. When rotating about the y-axis, the integrand contains x. In example one, we did discuss where this formula comes from, but for a quick review, the important thing to remember is, when finding the surface area of revolution in parametric form, if we're rotating about the x-axis, again, the integrand contains the variable y, where the y represents the radius, but in this case, the radius is a vertical distance. And when rotating about the y-axis, the integrand contains x, because the radius is now a horizontal distance. So now let's go back to our example and find the surface area. So the surface area is going to be equal to two pi times the integral from zero to pi over two. And the integrand is going to be y times the square root. Well in this case, y is equal to sine cubed t And then we'll have the square root dt, where the radicand is dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. And notice to find these derivatives, we will have to apply the chain rule. So for dx dt, since x is equal to cosine cubed t, the derivative would be three cosine squared t times the derivative of cosine t. So we'd have three cosine squared t times the derivative of cosine t, which is negative sine t. And all of this is squared. And then plus dy dt squared, again where y is sine cubed t. So dy dt would be three times sine squared t times the derivative of sine t. So that would be three sine squared t times cosine t. And again, all of this is squared. Now let's begin to simplify the integrand. So we'll start by simplifying underneath the square root. So here again, we're squaring this. So three squared is nine, so we'll have nine. And then we're squaring cosine squared, that's cosine to the fourth t. And then we're squaring negative sine t, which would be sine squared t. And then plus Again, three squared is nine. And then we're squaring sine squared t, so sine to the fourth t, and then cosine squared t. And now for the next step, we'll factor out the greatest common factor from the radicand, which would be nine cosine squared sine squared. So we're gonna factor out nine cosine squared t sine squared t. And that's going to leave us with cosine squared plus sine squared. But cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to one. So this simplifies nicely to just nine cosine squared sine squared. But now nine cosine squared t sine squared t is a perfect square, so this simplifies nicely to just three cosine t sine t. And now let's go ahead and factor out the three, and then multiply the trig functions. Factor out the three, that would give us six pi And then we have 
four factors of sine and one factor of cosine. So sine to the fourth t, cosine t dt. And now we should recognize that the derivative of sine t is equal to cosine t. So we can integrate using u substitution, where if u is equal to sine t, this switches by u to the fourth, and differential u is equal to cosine t dt, which we have here. So again, if u equals sine t, this becomes u to the fourth. And if differential u equals cosine t dt, this becomes du. When writing in terms of u, we'll leave off the limits of integration. So let's write this as six pi times the integral of, this would be u to the fourth du. The integral of u to the fourth would be u to the fifth divided by five, or one-fifth u to the fifth. Let's go ahead and factor out the one-fifth. Six times one-fifth would be six-fifths. So we have six pi over five, and then times, and then u to the fifth is sine to the fifth t. And now because we're back in terms of t, the limits of integration were from zero to pi over two. So now we have six pi over five times sine to the fifth pi over two minus sine to the fifth zero. Well, sine pi over two is equal to one, so this is one to the fifth or one. Sine zero is zero. Of course, zero to the fifth is still zero. So this is just six pi divided by five times one, or six pi over five, and this is square units for our surface area. So if we go back to our graph, this red surface area is equal to six-fifths pi, or six pi divided by five square units. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.